And there's a look into the recently closed Nordstrom department store. And I am here in the Eaton Center. And today is Wednesday, July 12th. The time is 6 p.m. And the temperature outside is around 24 degrees Celsius. And welcome to another walk around the city of Toronto. There's a look into Uniqlo. So a lot of people used to be able to cut through this section and take Nordstrom into the main part of the mall. And as you can see, that is now blocked off. And for this one, I'll be taking a walk around the east side of downtown, heading east along Dundas to the intersection of Dundas and Jarvis, which might be a good candidate for the intersection that has changed the most over the past decade or so. This corner here at Young and Dundas is always full of buskers and preachers. This is Young Street, and there's a look to the south. And Dundas Square across the street. I walk a different direction, but the choice is yours. See, God has given us free will, and free will to choose. But the choice you make is not heaven or hell. The choice you make is follow Jesus. Follow Jesus today. The Bible says, hallelujah. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but through him. There are not multiple ways to heaven. There are not multiple ways to the same God. That's false. The devil is a liar. Okay. This is Young and Dundas, and more specifically, Dundas Square. I know I've been here a lot lately, but it's a pretty good starting or ending point to these videos. I don't know if the correct term for that is a mariachi band or not. But it's good to see some life here in the square. So as mentioned, I'll be walking east along Dundas Street East here. Almost sounds like there's a helicopter buzzing overhead. Let's head to the north side of Dundas. And yes, that's a Queen Street car. They are running along the stretch of Dundas from McCall Street all the way to the east end of downtown. And just to the left, is Toronto Metropolitan University, the school formerly known as Ryerson. And there's a Toronto Public Health Unit. And this pub coming up is something of a local institution. That's the Imperial Pub. They've got a neat outdoor patio at the back there. And you can actually get a view of Dundas Square if you're sitting on that end of the patio. And I think this pub is around 78 years old. 
It's two floors. The second floor, I think, is by far the better of the two. They have what they call the library. Although, sadly, this whole block is up for redevelopment. So the Imperial may be on its way out. As might all these establishments. This is Bond Street. There's that streetcar. Just on the other side of the streetcar is a Hokkaido ramen shop. It is. And that has been there since 2014. And it sort of predates the recent ramen boom in the city. And this is Church Street. Right in front of a cop. <laughs> I don't really know what that officer was supposed to do in that situation. And on the left used to be an Esso gas station. One of the few that were left in downtown. But you'll notice there's an awful lot of new condos in the area. And if you were to travel back in time 10 years, Virtually none of these new ones would exist. And this is Mutual Street coming up, and after that is Jarvis Street, which I mentioned is one of the most transformed intersections in the city. And that guy who <laughs> was tweaking out is steps behind me now. Uh, three quarters of this intersection have changed quite drastically. That's the southwest corner just on the right there. That used to be a supermarket. A very small supermarket. And on the southeast corner, off in the direction there, there's now a Timmy's at the base of that condo. Used to be a collection of houses that were turned into retail shops. And if memory serves me right, I think there was a Holy Chow Chinese restaurant on the corner. And on that northeast corner there, used to be a hotel. I think a Hilton Garden Inn. And that was all here about 10 years ago. 
and where this parking lot is on the left. I think there's a plan to redevelop this into a condo. But I'll head south on Jarvis Street here and make my way down to Queen Street East. So this is southbound the west side of Jarvis. And it looks like there's a very tall tower planned for that lot there. And you might notice something a bit unusual about this stretch of Jarvis. I'll give you a second to see if you can clue in on that. Maybe if I walk on this side of the sidewalk, you can get a better idea. Have you spotted it? Well, you'll notice traffic is flowing in both directions, but there's no solid yellow line in the middle of the street. And the reason for that is reversible, or the center lane is reversible. And that stretches between Isabella to the north of here and Queen Street to the south. And they've got that green arrow there hanging over the intersection to let you know that that center lane is northbound. And between 3.45 p.m. and 6.30 p.m., that's a northbound lane. And all other times, it's a southbound lane. So it switches to accommodate the flow of traffic. While they're switching it over, there's a period of about five minutes where there's a red X in each direction. And we have arrived at Shooter Street. There's the Moss Park Armory over on the southeast corner there. That guy almost stepped right in front of a turning vehicle. Then he stepped right in front of that guy trying to cross the street. So back in 2009, city council voted to remove this reversible center lane after the election of Rob Ford. It was reinstated in 2011. And there were bike lanes on Jarvis Street at that time, but they were removed and shifted over to Sherburn Street, which is the next major north-south street just to the east of here. Coming up is Queen Street East, so I'll be turning right here. I just got a notification that Action Kid is live in Estes Park in Colorado.
There's more east side condos popping up. I'm surprised this parking lot has held out so long. Oh, look, an ice cream truck. <laughs> and this condo over here and shot up in a hurry a year ago. That was just a hole in the ground. And there's another one here where they have to incorporate the facade of these old retail buildings. This is the foot of Mutual Street. I've heard about the Carbon Bar, I've just never been. And where Downtown Cameras on the left used to be a Henry's Camera Store rental location. And the main Henry's was just around the corner on the left here. That recently relocated north up Church Street. And this might have been why Henry's relocated. There's a 60-story building plan for this lot. There's the Metropolitan United Church. So Henry's used to be right here on the left. Good luck to that landlord trying to lease that spot out. Can't imagine a tenant moving in and investing heavily into it, given that it's soon to be a goner. And it gets in a plus of the conversation. Like the guys will get together and then. So this is south down the east side of Church Street. That bar McVeigh's has been there for a while. And there used to be a pretty good Thai restaurant called the Golden Thai on this corner. That was there for as long as I can remember, but that closed down, I think, about three years ago. Looks like there might be some pretty neat lofts just above it. But this here is Richmond Street.
someone's parked their wheelchair here. These things are pretty expensive. That doesn't even look like it's locked up. And this condo on the right here is called Spire. And that was one of the first of all the buildings to go up during the recent condo boom on the east side. I had a friend who rented a unit in there. And we are at Adelaide Street. I'm gonna cut through St. James Park. On the right is property belonging to St. James Cathedral. So this is east on the south side of Adelaide Street East. And there's a look at the cathedral itself. And St. James was founded in 1797. But this particular structure was built in 1853. It replaced a structure that burnt down in the Great Fire of 1849, four years before it. It's always nice to walk through this park. There's a tulip garden just here on the right. Although those were in bloom several months ago. There, St. Lawrence Hall. I'm gonna cut through this laneway. I don't really know what you call it. Passageway, laneway, shortcut. Mm -hmm. 
and on the left is the new Northern St. Lawrence Market building, and apparently there's a green roof which it's sporting. Soul Exotica, I think I've seen another location of theirs up at Isabella and Young Street. There's the best value cinema in the city, also the most comfortable. They've got these excellent leather reclining chairs. I used to live in the area. I would frequent that spot. But this is Front Street coming up. There's the St. Lawrence Market itself. And straight ahead is the pedestrianized Market Street. I'm going to stick to the north side of Front Street here. Something smells really good. <laughs> and straight ahead is the Flatiron Building. Which, if I'm not mistaken, is actually 10 years older than New York City's famous Flatiron Building, although it's obviously significantly smaller. There's the Hot House that's been a mainstay of this neighborhood for quite a while. Being the St. Lawrence neighborhood. So on the south side of the Flatiron Building is Front Street. And on the north side is the start of Wellington Street. Looks like we'll get the signal in 10 seconds. And this side of Wellington Street has been completely rebuilt. It's a nice wide sidewalk. And on the right here is Suko Thai, an excellent northern Thai restaurant. These are probably Uber Eats guys. As it's a very popular takeout spot. Some neat patio spaces going in, and across the street is Berksy Park. That features the famous dog fountain.
I told myself I was just going to walk right by this park, but I'm so close, we might as well get a closer look at the fountain. And I remember watching this condo go up back when I worked at First Canadian Place. That is 88 Scott Street. It is 58 stories high, and I think there's 523 units. It was completed back in 2017. And this is a freshly redone intersection. And they've installed traffic lights and pedestrian signals. I don't think I've ever seen this place busy. We are a stone's throw away from the financial district. So I'm guessing that's a large after work crowd there. And this here is Young Street. I look south, but it looks like the sidewalk ends on this side. So this is north up the west side of Young Street, but I'm just going to be heading up to King here. And it's about time to think about what I'm going to have for dinner. But it's time to join the after work crowd. Actually, you know what? What time is it? I'm going to go west here on King Street over to St. Andrew Station. That will secure me a seat on the subway, whereas I probably won't get one if I hopped into King Station. The subway goes in a U-shape. And I just feel like getting some extra steps in. So consider this bonus footage. There's a look up at Scotia Plaza, my favorite skyscraper in the financial district. Although you could make a pretty strong case 
for the Art Deco Commerce Court North on the left here. And the reason I'll be able to get a seat at St. Andrew is the subway goes in a U shape. So St. Andrew heads south down the Union Station where most of the people will be getting off. And then at Union, the train will fill right back up and head north up to King. Normally I wouldn't care if I'm sitting or standing, but this gives me an excuse to keep recording. Look south down King Street. So I'll be heading west to University Avenue. When I mentioned 88 Scott Street, that condo going up. That is the building where I was watching it go up from. That's the first Canadian place. There's King Taps. Um, yeah. And this next street coming up is York Street. And a few days ago I posted a video heading south down York Street to Love Park. while recording that video that Earl's over there was doing a healthy business. So I don't think these offices are anywhere near back to being at their full normal capacity. But it's good to see some of these financial district businesses still doing quite well, or at least appearing to do quite well. Head down there into the subway station. Let's cross. And here we are at King and University. So I hope you enjoyed this random 
East Downtown Wander. as well as covering part of the financial district. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. And if you wish to support the channel, there's links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership down in the description. Also, all the names of the supporters will be appearing on the screen shortly. So double thanks to you as well. And I have an Instagram account at Johnny Strides and a Threads account at Johnny Strides. And there is a super thanks button appearing below the video if you wish to say thanks that way. Anywho, I'm going to head down into the subway and start thinking about what I want to get for dinner. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Yoink.